And this is a quick look behind the creative process of my new track, um, Be The Light. You know, a little bit of history about me. I mean, I'm a primarily a guitar player who's become a producer. About a year ago, I got diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and my hand's pretty bad, so I couldn't play for about a year. And I, I usually compose on guitar. I follow this um, YouTube channel called Master Guitar Academy with this guy. He had this lesson that was this Dorian run in A, basically this. Pretty cool. So I worked on that and kind of, you know, thought this would make a good progression for a song. Just and you know, worked out the chords to that, which were uh, A minor seven, G seven, F seven, and then E minor seven. Thought that well, that's a nice little descending run. It's pretty simple. It's actually in the key of the key of C, or you can play it as A minor. So. It's... So, um, you know, plug the uh, trusty old beat up Gibson SG into my uh, UAD Apollo and recorded that one night. Didn't really think much about it, just a sketch, just an idea. Part two came with this uh, Behringer MS1 that I got for Christmas. Took that progression, that, um, you know, A, G, F, E progression, and kind of worked out this little tone and this little bass line. And recorded that, uh, you know, into into Logic, just directly into Logic again through the UAD um, Apollo. I didn't really know what I had. It was just a sketch, but I pulled um, this disco beat, like 130 BPM disco beat. But I like to work uh, in slower tempo, so I slowed it down to 96 BPM, which gave it a real woozy feel. And I just put those guitars and that synth bass behind it, and you know, something started to feel a little bit. It was like the next week I came in. Got the uh, Fender Jazz Bass. So I just worked out uh, some slow, thick notes for that and a couple of little riffs. You know, after that it was about going in and editing the guitars and picking the best parts and cleaning them up and getting rid of the finger noise. When I did that, it kind of fell together and started to sound like a pretty cool little track. Um, you know, something like this. The, the delays and the reverbs and some of the effects on the, on the guitars kind of created this real kind of sublime, deep groove. And at that point, I was still just working with that sketch um, disco beat. But, you know, at the end of that night, you kind of do that little thing like, hmm, yeah, this is starting to have a feel. Uh, the next session was about creating, a, you know, just a pretty straightforward synth stack, you know, kind of doing some sound design. A few different uh, synth parts in there and kind of, it started to feel like a song. Uh, and I thought I really had something. But I, you know, I didn't have a theme for that song, and that was all going on in, in December and early January. And then the inauguration happened, and I don't know about you, but, but that evening, my wife and, and my son and I, we listened to um, Amanda Gorman's um, absolutely amazing poem. And, and at the end of it, we were, we were all in tears over the power and uh, the message uh, and that delivery of that poem. And I thought, well... You know, every 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 house producer on the planet is going to you know gank that vocal and do a track. And in fact, the very next day there were some out. But I, I wanted to do something a little more thoughtful and developed. And I really liked the ending, so that kind of became the theme. I, I was able to get that vocal, and interestingly enough, the track is in A, and her voice was in A. So I didn't even have to change the tuning on her voice at all. And you know, that kind of went from okay, we have a progression, we have the parts. We have a theme, you know, let's see if we can pull this together. And then it became about kind of arranging the song. One thing that happened was the bass line I had played and recorded, it wasn't very good. So I had a, a friend of mine did the bass part and it turned out excellent. So I flipped that in and combined that with the synth bass uh, and the analog bass. Yeah, you know, the next part was really about the beats because I was still working at that sketch beat. I hadn't done anything on the beats. It's all done in the box. A little bit of it's composed in uh, Logic's drum machine designer. A little bit of it's just pulling some loops from different places. Uh, you can see there's a drum loop that I had pulled out and then a lot of it's using uh, Logic Drummer just for some ideas and, and to see what Logic Drummer comes up with. You know, I, I like the layer kicks, obviously, like everybody does, and layer snares. But so I kind of take the ideas that Logic Drummer has, con convert those into MIDI, and then, um, you know, pick and choose the bits that I like, you know. So it, it may be part of one section mixed with another section. It may be some layered loops. And you can see here, there are really about three or four different Logic Drummers, along with that original loop, that SoCal, and along with this loop. And within that, I kind of built this drum track.
then you can kind of add it in with that, uh, with that bass part. And then we'll add in the synths here. about at that point about going and taking out things, taking out guitar parts that, that didn't fit or made it too cluttered, taking out the bass parts that especially were going to busy up the, the bottom end, taking out uh, quite a few of those synth parts. I think like the bass synth part and the lower register synth parts didn't end up in the track at all. I knew I wanted this song to have a certain emotion and an emotional roller coaster which I felt kind of fit the, 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 the poem and also the country. So it starts out with this one emotion and then it gets to the vocal break and then there's this much more powerful emotion I felt that came after that. There's this really strong powerful break into the synth bass for the last section which is much more contemplative and somewhat reflective. That was deliberate. Having these three sections, each with kind of a different emotional feel and an emotional tie that, that was where I was coming from and where I thought others were, that was a deliberate part of the creation of this song. You know, once you've got the arrangement, you've kind of got the emotion, you've got most of the instruments, instruments where you are, you've done most of the sound design, then it's about starting the mixing process. The mixing process is fairly typical for everyone else. You know, start with the kick, get the kick sounding good, you know, add in the uh, the bass, get the basses uh, interacting with the kick in the in the right way and in the right registers. You know, get to your snare, bring in the rest of your percussion, and working in your instruments, your synths, and your guitars and your vocals. Where there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Mixing is the fun part. I mean, that's what I consider myself as I'm a, I'm a producer and mixer, and I think I'm, I'm pretty good at taking various instrumentations and hitting a style and hitting a sound. And uh, This track had some challenges because there were a lot of parts, as you can see, and a lot of tracks, but it, it was a lot of fun mixing this and getting to a really good place. So the reference track on this was uh, Morchiba, Enjoy the Ride, which is a, a cool song uh, that I was just trying to you know get, get kind of the vibe and the sound out of it a little bit. I was going to talk a little bit about the master bus. Everybody wants to know about the master bus. There it is. You can see the things I used and things I didn't use. It, you know, there's there's a plan about how you EQ and then and then compress and then EQ again. Uh, you know, and then add a you know few few elements. Um, you know, I like the vintage EQs in Logic. They're obviously really cool. Uh, uh, using the multipressor on on the mid range can provide a lot of upside. Uh, the fresh air is on there, just barely, barely, barely on. Same thing for the saturation. That's this, uh, the soft tube saturation knob. It's barely on. And then you see quite a few other things that I tried and checked that just didn't work. And the, the Pro-Q3, the Fab Filter, that's mostly mid-side processing on that. Most of the main EQing is done. That's just to kind of create more space and, um, and headroom. Yeah, I have a number of people I send my working tracks to for feedback. And... Uh... Uh, I sent this to one of my one of my friends who's a really really good producer, and he's like, "Well, it's you know, I, I like this. I think it's I think this part's good and this part's bad." And he had done a different arrangement. He had taken my original track and cut it up and done a different shorter arrangement, which was really just really beautiful and powerful at the same time. And I was like, "Man, you know, I'm going to take your arrangement." And he's like, "That's fine. That's how that short version uh, got created." Is I went back in took the you know the mix down that I had done and re-edited it the way that he had suggested you know with a few minor tweaks and that gave me a different version. It's really great to have people that can give you feedback and suggestions like that. And then really the last step is I have a, a mastering engineer that I work with who's on uh, on the same vibe. It's like he can read my mind. No matter what the vibe is or the feel I want out of a track, I send it to him and he manages to catch it every time. Make things sound you know better, more professional and get the loud. That's really the story of the creation of the of this track. I'm I'm exceedingly proud of it. I think just from a a performance and a technical and a production aspect you know it's it's one of the best tracks in this genre anyway that I've ever done and I think just the emotion and, and kind of the theme that it caught I'm very very proud to have, have been able to to convey that so definitely uh, check it out on Spotify or all your favorite platforms the artist is 3c the track is titled be the light there's also a, a really neat video that I produced uh, that's on YouTube if you want to check that out and uh, give me your feedback and, and tell me what you think or if you have any questions. Thanks a bunch!